All right, let's talk about let's talk about Pokemon Live, a Pokemon musical, not to be confused with Pokemon Musical, the feature from the Generation 5 games where you could dress up your Pokemon to make them dance battle on stage if you didn't believe in violence, which I think is adorable, by the way. Pokemon Live is a licensed Nintendo musical that ran across the US and Canada between September of 2000 and January 2001. Side note, the last show was actually on January 28th, 2001, which is my birthday, so there. The main cast included Dominic Nolfi as Ash, Heidi Whale Mueller as Misty, Dennis Kenny as Brock, Jennifer Risser as Pikachu, Warren Kling as Jesse, Andrew Grinnells, James, Kathy Roach as Meowth, Darren Dustin Giovanni, D. Roschioli as Ash's mom, Patrick Frankfurt as Professor Oak, and Sinclair Mitchell as Dexter. Did you get all that? The story of the play is basically your typical Pokemon story from any game. Ash's mom and Oak wake Ash up claiming there's a small axe convention but he doesn't want to go so instead gets himself into mischief with Brock and Misty. Shocking. We are introduced directly to them after this when they walk in on Ash singing the Pokemon theme song from the television series. We also get to meet Pikachu here. Hell yeah. After the song, Brock and Misty ask Ash if they've seen Giovanni's commercial on TV claiming that anyone who beats him in a battle will receive a diamond badge. And Ash is like, fuck yeah I know there's a badge I don't have and they all agree to go see Giovanni to battle him. During this, there's a part where Misty kind of talks about Ash and how he cares more about Pokemon than her, which literally provokes the third song, My Best Friend, where he basically confirms he likes Pokemon more than Misty and Brock. I can't blame him. Misty and Brock join the song even though they literally made fun of him for singing not even three minutes ago, but that's okay. Then some background dancers come out, a bunch of random Pokemon with a weird funky drum beat that goes on for an extended amount of time, probably just to show off all the Pokemon assets they have. Which speaking of, I did not look much into this, but I've seen some stuff about this being lost media like just this in general and also like the costumes involved with this i'm not sure i like i said i don't look too much into it because i just wanted to mainly talk about the musical here after the song we are introduced to team rocket saying their famous line but it doesn't go exactly how they plan i guess and they start to do some crowd work but the crowd work when you look at it is just them insulting like 12 to 15 year olds so yeah Next is Giovanni's introduction, basically talking about his plans to kidnap Pikachu. Then we get our first battle between Giovanni and some random ass trainer. And man, when I realized there was a battle happening, I was so excited, I haven't even anticipated them trying to recreate a battle on stage. But then, he just shows off Mecha Mewtwo and its ability to learn and makes his opponent faint instantly, and yeah. A few things about Mecha Mewtwo. One, this. Two, his thing is he learns moves, then reuses them on Pokemon, and everything fucking insta-kills them. But, by using their own moves on the Pokemon, wouldn't that make them less effective? You tell me. Anyway, after that you see him wreck Alakazam and Bulbasaur. During this play, we see lots of talks about relationships, like boy-girl relationships, if you know what I mean. And every time I can't help but think that the audience is probably mainly 9-14 to 14 year olds with their parents, and if I were there, I'd definitely be like, this is weird. And if I were the parent, I'd be like, bro, what are they showing my kids on TV? Ash starts singing the sixth song about getting the diamond badge. We see Team Rocket to infer that they're following them, and then they go off. Meanwhile, Jesse and James fall into a hole, and Meowth has to go find a rope to rescue them. Our first Psyduck walk across. We meet Mom and Oak on the way to the Snorlax convention, discussing Ash growing up, which then makes them sing a song about change and growing up is good for a young boy to a man. You get the gist. Then we see Giovanni, and he's like, I set this up to trap you, and also I still love you, Miss Ketchum. Ooh. Then we go back to the gang, and they realize that they went in a circle because Brock threw the map away before talking to some girls, because he couldn't ask for directions if he was holding the map. Right. Why he didn't let someone else hold it? Not sure. They meet another trainer who ends up being deaf and only speaks sign language, obviously. Brock comes to the rescue knowing sign language, and because of the shitty quality of this video and me not knowing that much sign language, I feel like this is kind of offensive to sign language and it's not real, but like I can't really tell so someone please help me. The trainer goes first, uses Jigglypuff, and puts them to sleep, and then he just dip. Misty is the first one to wake up and just starts singing about how she secretly loves Ash. Literally nothing fucking happens during the scene. She just stands off to the side while four Pokemon go off by like by just go off the screen. That's it. Then they all wake up, realize the deaf man left them a map and go off. Hear Me Out comes back with a rope, but Jesse and James are sleeping because they too heard the sleeping song. Crazy I know because the hole is right there. So Meowth wakes them up and they climb out. Which, I love this part by the way, because they climb out at the same time on two different sides of the hole using the same one rope. Then they're sad they suck. Meowth sings a song about how they suck, but they're the best at sucking, and somehow a bunch of Pikachus come out and they steal the real one without the gang noticing. It's very bizarre. Intermission. 
All right, we're back, baby. Greeted by Dexter describing to us what a Pokedex is and shows off a bunch of cool Pokemon. I just have to mention here, he's literally the only black person in this performance and also is the only one with a rap song. But it's pretty cool because I'm choosing to believe Nintendo truly meant it in good spirit to represent those who watch the show but don't really look like the characters. Anyway, at one point they asked the kids in the crowd questions, which is kind of cute, but you can tell it proves my theory from earlier that these kids are like little, like really this little. This is it, Feed me some dad. go ahead. So, are your friends slow bros or muck? <laughs> muck. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty really good. I want Ash and the gang return, theorizing Team Rocket stole Pikachu. Misty then goes, well maybe he ran off on you because you're so selfish, which causes them to split up, Ash running off alone and Misty running off with Brock. Ash then breaks out into a song about how he thinks maybe they're right and Pikachu did just leave on his own. Psyduck walk across too. Then we see Oak and Mom trapped in a cage by Giovanni. Oak asks the mom about her past and she tells him, Giovanni walks in right after and quickly tries to flex on him with Mecha Mewtwo. Team Rocket shows up with Pikachu, but when Giovanni asks him to use Pikachu, he refuses, instead freeing Mom and Oak, and they escape. However, Pikachu does not get to escape, sadly. Back to Brock and Misty. Misty confesses she lied, thinking Pikachu ran away and believed it was Team Rocket, which made Brock be like, ooh, you like Ash, which then prompts him to go on a song about Nurse Droid and some lady officer who are only on stage here and now, and that's it. He just sings a song about being a bachelor. Ash's mom starts singing a song about keeping her past a secret, which makes Misty join in talking about her secret love for Ash. Then Ash comes out, meets everyone, because apparently Mom and Oak actually ran into Misty and Brock at some point. They tell Ash about Pikachu and Team Rocket, and his mom tells him her past about Giovanni. Ash gets all, I hate you mom, and leaves with Team Rocket to fight Giovanni. Once there, Giovanni immediately kicks them out, which they exit on scooters, which I think is a nice little tidbit. Giovanni and Ash start battling, and yep, guess what happens? He learns Thundershock, Thunder Attack, makes Pikachu quickly faint, and goes on a rant about, well, you know, winning. But then... Someone comes to save the day, and that someone is the real Mewtwo, which I thought was badass. Mewtwo tells him not to hurt Ash and that he will defeat his mecha counterpart. They battle, and when Giovanni makes him reuse the attack, nothing happens. Literally, he just won't do anything. Giovanni obviously gets pissed off, and Mecha Mewtwo starts talking about how it did learn. It learned a lot. It learned about love and friendship from Ash, and learned about evil and hatred from Giovanni. It also learned self-destruct at some point, I guess. Then they clear the room and he explodes, and that's it. They do the final song as people come out on the stage. Looking back at all this, I think it was just way too ahead of its time. I mean, the franchise had only been around for like four or five years at this point. And like, even though at this point it was obviously so wildly successful, a show like that early on, which had like a lot of super niche references and expecting American children to like applaud the bad guys, it like, it just didn't make sense, especially for young children, like an American audience who are not gonna pay attention to war that much. And I'm sure in today's age where musicals are fucking popping off again right now and the insane like super niche cult following Pokemon has, like this just would have been legendary. And yes, I do know there's a 20th anniversary, but this is not the same. The end.